ECF was founded in 1949 by then presiding Bishop Henry Knox Sherrill as a independent lay-led organization. And our mission is to work with Episcopal faith communities, congregations, dioceses, seminary schools of all sizes and shapes on visioning and planning, leadership and financial resource development as they navigate what it means to be the church of the future in very challenging yet exciting times. The main mission of ECF is to support leadership in the church, not only among clergy, but the laity. We really just want to partner alongside people to help them be successful. Because your church is going to be different than the church down the street. You're going to need different solutions. In our mind, programs are strategies for implementing our mission. We don't have all the answers, but we do have some expertise. So I think ECF is really on the cutting edge of providing phenomenal resources through which folks all over the church are able to share their wisdom with others. My work with the uh, ECF has been uh, manifold in terms of uh, programmatic approach. They don't just do it once and say, wow, that was great, aren't we good? They evaluate uh, the work that they have done so that the teaching that is needed for uh, tomorrow is not necessarily the teaching that was necessary you know, five years ago. I have an armoire in my office and we have vestry resource guides in English and Spanish. I find that when I have a meeting, whether it's with the entire vestry retreat or one person coming to my office, that is a giveaway that becomes a big part of our conversation. Vital Practices is a web-based resource for congregations. It has Vestry Papers, which is a long-standing publication of ECF. Where I mostly use Vital Practices is to find topics that I'm looking for, all the way from an outreach project to, you know, what should a treasurer do. I can send those articles then to the congregations. The information is coming from people that are actually doing the work and telling us what's working for them. But I had just received a question from a group group of leaders from a vestry who had already gone through capital campaign consulting. They have already gone through endowment management. They were trying to tie it together into strategic planning. And I had just read the vestry papers that talked about that the day before. Using that email as a timely topic and give it to them when they, I know they need it seals the deal and that's something that is especially valuable about Episcopal Church Foundation. Our financial resource programs span a continuum of services that we know are needed from stewardship-based programs to capital raising programs to endowment management programs. Our approach to capital campaigns at ECF is unique in that it's holistic. It's about linking the financial goals with mission and ministry. So we begin with discernment, asking the question, who is God calling you to be here today in this place? Doing a capital campaign can be a transformative experience. People are energized and faith communities are strengthened in the process. ECF has changed um, stewardship from just raising money for, uh, for ministries and into forming true Christian discipleship. Stewardship is more than just money. It's about our response to God's bounty. When ECF came in and did the feasibility study, I thought people were gonna say, nope, we just don't have the appetite for it. And in fact, because of the good work that ECF did in that feasibility survey, they said, no, actually you do have the capacity for this. ECF's Endowment Management Solutions Program, or EMS, it has grown incredibly. And it's grown because we've spent time talking to endowment uh, leaders in the church, and they told us what they need. We're able to provide comprehensive support to leaders throughout the church. We can help them organize, invest, and grow their endowment. And to be able to think in an innovative way. We are also able to help individual congregations and other entities through investing. It enables them to do more and to plan for the future and to actually realize that they have a future in the Episcopal Church.
We don't want to duplicate or replicate what other people are doing. I think the most effective and efficient way of doing that is working with organizations and other partners who do a similar type of work. Some of the key ones are the Church Pension Group. We work with them in a variety of capacities, including our Lilly Initiative. Through a grant from the Lilly Endowment, we, we developed a pilot program called Boot Camp. And the model is basically an entrepreneurial priest ordained five or fewer years, nominated by his or her bishop, brings two lay leaders, uh, an existing leader and emerging leader, to a three-day residential program. You have pre-work that you do in order to prepare with your lay leader and your team. You then come to the on-site event for a few days. You then have the critical part of six months of coaching which helps you and your team and your congregation to implement their plan. One of the key takeaways I got from ECF Boot Camp was the importance of strategic thinking. Constantly asking, okay, how is this going to be relevant or helpful for us in five months, six months? And then being willing to let stuff go that's no longer helpful. The best next step, that was constantly the question being asked by the ECF facilitators. Another benefit was recognizing that the things that we're struggling with in our parish are really more universal than I had suspected. And so there was some sense of relief that I got in the context of these facilitated conversations. The Fellowship Partners Program is uh, ECF's longest running program. We provide uh, financial support and other assistance to emerging uh, academic and uh, grassroots ministry leaders who will continue to provide uh, leadership uh, as we move into kind of the brave new world. I am a lifelong Episcopalian. I was born and raised in the church. I am a proud preacher's kid. I actually like to think of the Episcopal Church as a church that has often been very radical and very unapologetic about really pushing for social justice and pushing for dialogue that sometimes feels uncomfortable. And so I think it's really important that the Episcopal Church Foundation has invested in the fellows who are willing to stand up and say, in this conference, in this board meeting, in this vestry meeting, I would like to stand and push us forward in a conversation that's really critical for the future of our church. ECF is open to understand uh, barriers such as language and culture and part of understanding those barriers is having an expanded team of people from different uh, cultures and ability to speak different languages. One of the fastest growing groups in the Episcopal Church are Latinos. One of the reasons why I wanted to come to ECF is because it's one of the only organizations that has decided to create resources in Spanish, not translations, but actual resources that began in Spanish. The things that come out of our office are always of highest quality. They're actual things that people in the trenches of Latino ministry are using and are writing. Part of the work that we do is always trying to help our faith communities get the resources they need to engage God's mission in their context and culture. And we really see ECF as a partner in doing that, whether that be around strategic planning or uh, financial work around capital campaigns, uh, work around vestries. All of that is um, good work that ECF does and has really been advantageous and beneficial to us and the work we do in the Episcopal Church in Minnesota. I think what ECF did for me is that it allowed me to see that I cannot do this by myself. That unless I make connections with my vestry and I allow the vestry to make connections with the congregations, then the work they're doing will not come to their full maturation, teaching clergy and lay persons to work together for the sake of building God's mission on earth is, is very vital. I recommend a relationship with ECF regularly and for any part capital, endowment, planning, what, whatever, because you will be so well equipped and have the resources that you need when you need them. And in the meantime, you'll know they're always there. ECF has a wonderful rich history and we're really proud of what we've done since 1949, responding to changing needs. But I hope at the end, uh, people not only look to ECF as the place where they went for tools and resources and programs and how to maintain the traditional Episcopal Church we all know and love, but more importantly that ECF helped them navigate what it means to be the church of the future.